This is lesson two of 20 lessons on how to build a Joomla website. If you manage to surf straight into this lesson, you might like to start at the beginning. Look for the playlist link or a link to lesson one on this page. Before choosing Joomla, I looked at a huge range of web building solutions. You might not be convinced yet that Joomla is the best solution for you. So in this lesson, I'm gonna explain why I went with Joomla over the hundreds of other options. If you're convinced that Joomla is right for you, move on to Lesson 3. Here are the main points that attracted me to Joomla. It is free. If you're developing low-cost websites, you need a low-cost CMS. Joomla is free, which allows you to use it for even the most basic of sites. It's also cross-platform. The software is not dependent on your local operating system. So it doesn't matter if you use a Mac, PC or Linux. And when it comes to hosting a Joomla site, you can choose a host that uses the Apache server, which is usually run on the Linux operating system, or Windows IIS. The majority of Joomla sites are hosted on Linux powered servers. Hosting is discussed in later lessons, and please don't let these terms frighten you as everything you need to know is explained clearly. Support. The greatest criticism of open source applications is the lack of support. Joomla has an extremely large user base, which means there are a lot of people available to answer your questions at the Joomla forum. We have our own forum too. Long history. As there are so many CMS products available, some of them do disappear very quickly. If you make the wrong choice, you're stuck with software that has no support or ongoing development. Joomla is here for the long term and has a history dating back to 2000. Thousands of extensions. Extensions are programs created by third parties that extend the functionality of Joomla. Examples include shopping carts, photo galleries and membership sites. There are thousands of Joomla extensions available so when you need to add functionality to your site, there is a good chance that a solution already exists. Secure. By itself, Joomla is very secure. However, like any software, you need to keep it and any third-party extensions up to date. Popularity. If you're a web developer, you can use Joomla's popularity to help sell your services. Your customers will feel more at ease if you tell them that you use the world's most popular CMS that is supported by thousands of developers. That means if they ever want to change developers, then it will be easy to find someone else to take over their website. Now, of course, you don't want to lose their business in the future, and the whole point of using Joomla is so clients can manage their own site. But this assurance will help you win more business. And if you plan to build and maintain your site yourself, Rest assured that if you run into trouble, there is a solution. Joomla's popularity means that there are thousands of developers you can hire to help you with anything you might find is beyond your ability, such as building a custom application. When I weighed up these benefits, Joomla looked like a good option. But what about other popular open source content management systems? There are two big contenders, WordPress and Drupal. Drupal is along the same lines as Joomla. WordPress was built to be used for blogging, but these days it can do a lot more. Now, there's nothing like a software comparison to spark a debate, and as you'd expect, I'm somewhat biased towards Joomla, but I'll try to be objective. There are actually some really good features in these other products. Let's start with WordPress. WordPress was originally designed as a blogging platform. If you're not familiar with the term blog, it's short for web log. These sites contain a series of articles written by one or more authors on a particular topic. WordPress has evolved and is now used to power lots of other types of sites, not just blogs. Let's take a look at the interface. This is a typical WordPress installation. The latest post is displayed at the top. and includes fields like the date, the category, and the author name. 
You can also create static pages. Both blog pages and static pages can include a comments box encouraging feedback from readers. This is the administration interface. A post includes a title and the associated content. It's really simple to use and overall WordPress is an excellent product. But here's a few things to consider. Firstly, Joomla articles can be easily arranged in a blog format. It currently lacks a native commenting feature, but there are a couple of excellent free extensions available. Those who are used to Joomla find a couple of annoying things about WordPress. Firstly, there is no native way to hide the posted date, category and author name on blog pages. You might not always want to display this, which is something easily controlled in a Joomla site. Also, these content items at the right, which are called widgets in WordPress, appear on all category pages. Joomla calls this type of content modules, and they can easily be allocated to all or specific pages. Another point is the sort order. With blog pages, you tend to want to display the most recent blog at the top of the page, and this is how WordPress works. But there might be occasions when you want to display the posts in, say, alphabetical order. Joomla natively provides many sort order options, such as by date, author name, alphabetical or your own order. Now, to be fair, these are relatively small issues and they can be managed in WordPress with either a plugin or by altering the code. Joomla is sometimes criticised for being overly complex and therefore hard to learn. Of course, if something does more, it takes longer to learn it all, but I've designed this course to teach the essentials so you can get up and running very quickly. Besides, this complexity provides a lot of control, which you'll appreciate once you start using it. So, despite the fact that WordPress can be used for a lot more than simple blogging, that is still its core strength. If that's all you want to do, then I would seriously consider it. But before making that decision, have a think about your future needs too, as you might find that Joomla has the functionality that you'll need later. Now let's move on to a CMS called Drupal. Broadly speaking, Drupal is more developer orientated and Joomla is more user focused. Developers who favour Drupal do so because they find it easier to manipulate and create new functionality. However, if you're not a developer, you will find it harder to learn to use Drupal than Joomla. Here is the default installation. Adding content appears easy at first, as you just add a title and enter some content. But by default, no editor is included for the body section, so you can't easily format the content. Some developers prefer this because they like to enter formatting code manually. But for beginners, you'll need to install a plugin to get an editor. Drupal has a steeper learning curve than Joomla. It also doesn't have as many templates or extensions available. If you're a website owner, I would give it a miss. But if you're a developer making sites for yourself, you might consider it. There is an important distinction here. If you're making sites for clients who will be controlling the content, you should think twice. The interface is not intuitive so you might find yourself spending time supporting clients instead of getting on with your next project. If, however, you're a developer and making sites for yourself, you might prefer Drupal. I don't have much experience with it, but I have read that it's nicer to code for Drupal and that the developer community is friendlier than Joomla. Drupal used to have several advantages over Joomla, including a content construction kit, a better storage system, and better access control. However, the current version of Joomla now handles this either within the core or via extensions. So there's a quick wrap up of why I went with Joomla. It can take a little while to get your head around, which is why you're watching these videos, but once you've set up your first site, I'm sure you'll love using it. The next lesson explains what software and other requirements you need to build a Joomla website. 
If you haven't already, visit our website at www.buildajoomlawebsite.com and look for the link to download the free companion workbook for this series. This is a handy guide to keep by your side while you're building your first Joomla website.